Well, it's a new year and I thought this would be a good time to answer some of your questions. Stay tuned and we'll dive right in. So I asked on Facebook and Instagram if anybody wanted to ask me a question for this episode and I was literally blown away by the answers. They were so thoughtful, they weren't like, what aperture setting do you use or, you know, just some of the things maybe I expected you guys to ask, but you asked like some really great, really deep questions. And some of them were so good, I'm actually gonna save them for a separate video. So if I don't get to your question here, it might mean that I'm gonna dedicate an entire video to it, um, or it might mean that maybe it wasn't something I felt comfortable answering here. But let's dive right in. So Stacy T asks, how do you get inspired when you're in a creative slump, like the gloom of winter? Yeah, in Minnesota, she lives in Wisconsin. It's just not really that fun to shoot this time of year. I mean, yeah, the snow is pretty if it ever falls around here, which it hasn't much this year. Uh, it's fun to get out in the snow and shoot, but it's also very cold. Um, horses are fuzzy, whatever. So what I decided to do this year, and I did this back in 2011, was to force myself to take one photo a day for an entire year. So it's a 365 project. And that photo can be of my horses, of cats, sunrises, sunsets, dogs, whatever. But it forces me to get out and shoot even when I'm like, maybe not feeling inspired. Um, like yesterday, like I had all these ideas and I would, everything just worked against me. And um, I just kept pushing myself and pushing myself until I came up with an idea. I'm gonna link below to the blog where I'm posting my daily photos because I'm also posting kind of a journal of the day. And sometimes it talks about the images, I share the settings for each image, sometimes I talk about the process, sometimes I just talk about my life. Michelle H asks, how much time do you spend processing and editing your photos? I'm actually really fast at this because I don't like spending a lot of time at my computer. I would rather be in the barn or on the back of a horse or out shooting. And so um, a typical two hour session, I'm gonna shoot about 1200 images. I'm gonna call that down to 100 in about 30 minutes. And then I take about an hour to edit those 100. And by edit, I mean crop and color correct. I don't do retouching until people order images and I don't sell all the images except in a really premium kind of price range. And so that keeps my workflow really efficient. I am gonna do a workflow video because it's something I'm super passionate about and just explain all the different steps in my workflow. Okay, um, Heidi J asks, how do you make your photos pop in post? This is really easy. I mean, it, it seems kind of easy, but I make sure I have true white and true black in almost every one of my images. And how you know that is by looking at your histogram, either in Lightroom, Photoshop, like in levels, you can see the histogram. I make sure I have true black and true white. And if I have true black and true white, I have good color, I have good contrast, I have good clarity. Now also, it is a factor of a great camera, high quality lenses, um, using light correctly, uh, those things too. But I would say the number one thing about pop is to make sure you have the right contrast. James G asks, what is your number one tip for new or beginner equine photographies to take the next step and get better at photography? Now this is gonna seem like I'm tossing it off and I'm not, I promise. But you just need to get out and shoot more. Most people I know, they wanna grow, but they don't wanna actually go out there and spend the time behind the camera. I have been doing this since 2004, so that's like 14 years. And the place that I learn the most about photography is behind the camera, is out there taking pictures, making mistakes, trying different things. I mean, I'll go on a practice shoot just for myself and I will come home with a lot of bad photos because I'm trying new things. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm intentionally failing because that's the way that I grow the most. Alyssa S said, asks, what's the hardest thing about working for yourself and being a business owner? And I had to think about this because it's actually, there's a lot of hard things. And I would say um, one that really feels immediate to me is there's nobody else to make decisions for me or help me make decisions about my business. And some of the decisions I make could make or break my business in the future. It could help me grow a business. I may make a mistake that causes me to fail. And I mean, it's all on me. I have a husband who is awesome for running things, you know, bouncing things off of, and he's been around this business long enough 
he can uh, really give me good feedback and, and good ideas. He actually solved a really significant problem for me the other day and about pricing and I was just like, wow, you are, this is just, I'm so thankful for him. How do you get horses to run free in your shoots? Mine seem to want to hang out and get treats. Oh my gosh, yes. Yes, that is my problem too. They just, I could probably post 30 pictures a day of a close up of my horse's nostril because when I go out there with a the camera, they're just like, what you got there? What you got there? And they want treats and they want to be bedded. Uh, and I meant to have a prop here, but I'm pretty sure I can picture this for you. Uh, it's a, like a, a long whip, buggy whip, put a target bag at the end, shake it a little, my horses will go galloping across the pasture. Tails flagged, snorting like fire breathing dragons, you know. So that's how I get horses to move at liberty, even with a client, with my own horses. It's just something about that plastic bag at the end of a whip, it just gets them going. And it, it makes for good photos, but it doesn't last very long. So once they get that snorty energy out, then they're just like, oh, you're gonna make us move again. Okay, and Amanda P asks, I know you've transitioned to only taking equine photos. What was your motivation to solely focus on horses? Also, what has been the most rewarding part of equine photography? Um, in 2013, I slipped on a concrete floor and it fell on my head and I got a concussion and a traumatic brain injury. At the time, my primary business was wedding photography. And after about a year and a half of that, I realized that that wasn't going to work anymore because the traumatic brain injury, I, I made a fairly good recovery, but I will have some limitations from that probably for the rest of my life. And uh, that left me with trying to make an entire living off of my equine work. And so I hustled and um, I, I had a couple of years where financially it was really a struggle, but now we're back on our feet and things are really becoming profitable in the business. But that was a tough time. That was a tough transition. I don't regret it now. I never regretted it. I mean, I was really kind of ready to be done with wedding photography. It's a changing industry. It's grueling physically and emotionally and mentally throughout the day. And so I'm so thankful for all the weddings I got to be a part of over the years. But shifting to just equine work was like, it was hard and wonderful all at the same time. And then she asked, what's the most rewarding thing about being an equine photographer? And this is a really easy answer for me. Um, around between like uh, the beginning of January, maybe the first like couple weeks of January, I had three friends lose their horses. Like they passed away for one was tragic in a fire. Uh, one was colic and the other two, the other lost two horses at once to just degenerative joint and hoof disease where the horses couldn't be made comfortable anymore. And one of my first thoughts when I would hear of each of these situations was, I am so glad I photographed your horse last year. You know, and in some cases I did a full portrait session, in some cases their horse was a part of a commercial shoot I did. But being able to preserve those memories for people, I know it sounds like really cliche, but it's becoming actually a really driving um, motivation for me to make sure that people do not lose their horses without having quality images to remember them by. That's just, just becoming so, so important to me. And then the most rewarding thing is when they do lose their horse to know that I was a part of helping them uh, m retain those memories of those relationships. Um, what was your favorite photo shoot? This is a great question. This is Nicole O asked this question. And uh, it's like asking who my favorite kid is or my favorite dog or my favorite horse. I don't have kids, but my favorite cat, although I might actually have a favorite cat. Um, I really, really loved photographing Cavalia. If you don't know what it is, I'll share a couple pictures on the screen. Um, it's like Cirque du Soleil with horses. And I photographed the preview when they came to Minneapolis and then they asked me to photograph the show. And then they hired me to photograph the premiere of Odiseo, their second show that they created. And they flew me to Atlanta and I got to shoot behind the scenes. and. And I just, it was such dramatic light and amazing horsemanship and the horses were so sweet. I, yeah, I mean, that's like way high on that top of that list. I 
also really, really loved photographing the Ames Perch runs last fall in that fall color. I mean, it was just one of those pinch me moments. And just those animals are so wonderful. We stayed till dark holding horses for them so that they could take all the harnesses off and get them ready to go in the trailers and brought home. And just standing there with my friend Courtney and just holding these gentle giants. It was just, it was pretty dreamy. And then finally, I have a friend who has a ranch in California and I have gone on a cattle drive. I have photographed them ranching in the mountains. I did a documentary about them. Like, I just love everything about their lifestyle. I love photographing it. I love being out there. And so those three would be like my top photo shoots in some kind of order, or maybe they're just even tied. Okay, uh, last page. Uh, Miss, Missy M, she has the last two questions because they were so good. Uh, when you develop your own style and your photos reflect that, how do you go outside the box to keep it fresh or do you really need to? And I'm going to admit that this is a challenge. You know, at the place that I'm at as a photographer, I'm really comfortable with my craft. I know how to get what I want out of my camera and look at a scene and I know how to expose for it and I know how to do the color. I mean, I have a certain level of mastery that could cause this to become just formulaic. And I, I felt that happening a little bit in my work recently. And so I've started pushing harder to try new things. I do have some plans for this year, which I will share about later. Um, I can't really see that I'll change my style at all because I love the consistency. I love that people see an image and they know it's mine. But I'm gonna maybe change my approach. Maybe I will change the lens that I'm using. Maybe I'll change um, what I'm shooting. I don't, you know, like I have to continually evolve and come up with new ways to do this so that I don't get bored. And then Missy's other question was, what is on your photography bucket list? And uh, I had to think about this one too, because I just, I have so many great opportunities just in everyday life. You know, I, I never know when I show up at a shoot what might be there and what kind of light I might find and what I might be able to make in that light. Like, like this image of a gray horse that I made at the end of a shoot. It wasn't even what we were shooting, but there was this amazing fog that came in the arena because it was so cold outside and this horse was groomed to the nines. And I mean, it was just, and I made like one of my favorite images ever. But that wasn't what I was even there to shoot that day. And so sometimes it just kind of comes to me. But that said, there are two things I've been thinking about lately that I'd really like to shoot. And one is I'd really like to shoot horses in water, like running on the beach. I would love to shoot horses swimming, um, you know, underwater. All that kind of stuff really interests me. I have no like access to that. So if anyone's watching and they have access to that, um, and would like to give me an opportunity, then I would love to hear from you. Otherwise, I'd really like to go to Iceland. I think Iceland looks so beautiful. The Icelandic horses are so charming. I know it's cliche, everybody's going to Iceland, but I kind of want to go. Um, I was thinking about going to the World Equestrian Games this year, and once I factored in all the expenses, I'm like, you know, I could just go to Iceland. And being such a nature lover and a beauty lover, I think I would enjoy Iceland more than the World Equestrian Games, though that would have been fun too. All right, well that is all I have today, and like I said, I'm holding some back for another day when um, I can really dive into some of the deeper topics that were asked of me. Um, if you have questions, I would love to keep doing these. I, I encourage you to ask your questions in the comments, and I will keep a running list. Once I have enough questions for another video, I will do another Q&A. Otherwise, uh, look for some videos coming up that are based on some of the questions I received for this one. If you enjoyed this video, I would love it if you would give it a like or leave a comment. If you're on YouTube, I would love it if you, if you would subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for sticking with me and I will see you again soon.